So what I want to first do is I want us to write down the passages we're going to look at. So we want to begin with Romans chapter 1. The subject will be, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So we will begin with Romans chapter 1. And Paul is giving his personal testimony. And there are three eyes. He says, I am a debtor. I am ready. And then in chapter 1 of Romans 1.16, he says, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and to the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God revealed. Now this statement is most important to us. The righteous are those who have placed their faith in the person of Jesus Christ. That person is explained to us in Romans 1.1 1, 1 through 5. We'll look at that later. The righteous are those that are made righteous in Jesus Christ. God's righteousness is imputed, put to their account. That's what righteousness is. It is the, it is the uh, imputed righteousness of God imputed to us by faith. We are not righteous. <laughs> we are sinners. And we cannot produce the righteousness of God. We can produce goodness and righteousness, but not for salvation. We must have the righteousness of God for salvation. Here it says, in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed. Now that's almost a French word. That's a, that's a pretty close word to the French. <laughs> And it's the idea of revelation is manifested truth. This is the manifested truth from faith to faith. It's not of works. It's not being a good Catholic or being a good Protestant. It's not doing all the good works prescribed to us. Those things are okay, but they, they do not produce the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is found in God himself. So it says, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I'm going to translate what that means. The just are the righteous in Christ. Shall live spiritually and eternally by faith. Now look at that verse 17. Faith is mentioned three times. Three times. From faith to faith. And the just shall live by faith. It's by faith this righteousness of God is put to our account. And the book of Romans explains that thoroughly to us. Okay? So that's passage number one. Now I want to go to passage number two. And I'm going to give you these ahead in case... We get disconnected because I can't tell who all I'm connected with. Okay? Some are coming, some are going. 
So let's look now in Galatians, the book of Galatians. And we see the same statement made, but in a different context. And in the book of Galatians, chapter 2. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, in verse 15. Paul is rebuking Peter. I don't think I'd want to be in that meeting. But, um, and we'll, we'll explain the context later. Now, Romans is about the power of God unto salvation. And Galatians is about the truth of the gospel unto salvation. So Romans is the power of God unto salvation. And Galatians is the truth of the gospel unto salvation. The Galatian church tried to mix the law with grace. To be saved, you see. And as we read in Romans, it is by faith that God imputes or puts to our account his righteousness. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, in verse 16, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, it says... Knowing that a man is not justified by works. It, it comes, the Bible comes right out and tells us it's not by works, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not of works of the law or by the for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified so we we are not justified by law we're not justified by works we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ Paul was explaining to the Galatians that we cannot be uh, impelled or um, uh, compelled to trust the law and grace or trust works and grace. Otherwise, grace is no more grace and works is no more works. Works and grace are like oil and water. They don't go together, okay, for salvation. They don't go together for salvation. They certainly go together after salvation, which we'll look at in the book of James later. Because by works is our justification made mature. So we don't throw works out altogether. We don't sit back and say, I'm justified by faith. Now I need to do nothing. So that is not the case here. So in the book of Galatians, it is about the truth of the gospel concerning the just shall live by faith. And Paul has stated it twice, that it is not by works it is not by the law, but it is by faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Okay, now next, let's look in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. We'll be looking at Hebrews as well. So turn with me in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. These believers were those that were falling away. They were going to turn away or being drawn back from the faith. Now in verse chapter 10 verse 38, and we will deal with all of these contexts. I'm just giving you the context for now so that we can write them down 
so that on Wednesday we can get into the context. The reason I am stressing context is because the Bible is written in a context. And it is the context that gives the meaning to the verse and the language we're looking at. Okay? Now this is the practical application of the just shall live by faith. Now in verse 38, it says, Now the just live by faith. There's a practical application that we have to understand. So there is the just shall live by faith for salvation. It's by faith in the person of Jesus Christ. That's made clear in the power of the gospel of God's grace in Romans chapter 1. There is the truth of the gospel. That it is not by law or by works, but it is by faith in the person of Jesus Christ. The just shall live by faith. Now here in the book of Hebrews, we have the practical application. That those who are justified by faith live their lives by faith. Our practical living must match what we proclaim our doctrine is. And Paul is making it clear to the Hebrew Christians that we do not draw back because the just, the righteous of God, uh, live spiritually eternally by conviction of who Jesus is. And he says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back to perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. This section, Paul is exhorting them to not cast away their confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. He's telling them that they have need of perseverance. Now, um, that idea, see, that's what Hebrews is about. It's about perseverance of faith. Perseverance of faith. And in the next chapter, chapter 11 are examples of those who walk by faith. And so then um, he goes on to say, you have need of perseverance. Uh, this is where we carry on, uh, that we walk and live our lives by faith as the righteous in Christ Jesus. It's that confidence that we have in him. Okay, now in verse 37, he says, Terry and I will come. Uh, don't, uh, don't quit now. <laughs> Terry, keep going. And then, uh, uh, and then he says, now the just live by faith. And chapter 11, we have examples from the beginning all the way through to chapter 12, 1 through 2, concerning Jesus Christ. He's the originator and the perfecter of faith. So this is examples of how those that are just walk by faith. Okay? Now, there is a passage in the Old Testament. When Paul said in Romans, it is written... He meant back in the book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk. It's in the Minor Prophets, Habakkuk. And in Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, this is when Israel, Habakkuk has to tell Israel that the Chaldeans are coming. 
And they are going to take uh, Jerusalem and Israel over. Because God must judge the sin of Israel. They've become like the nations. And Habakkuk says, no, how can God be so unholy as to use these terribly wicked people to judge his own people? And so he says, I'm going to sit on my tower and see what God has to say about that. And so um, God answers Habakkuk or Habakkuk. And he says in Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2, starting in verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tablet that he may run, that he that runs, that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. In other words, it isn't immediately, but it's for an appointed time. This is coming. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. This is coming. You can count on it. Maybe not immediately, but it's coming. Then in verse 4, Behold, his soul that is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Here again is a practical application. You see, Israel was not walking by faith. And they were living like all the other nations. There are Christians today who think they can hold hands with the world and still claim to be a Christian. <laughs> and God will judge that. He judges wickedness. God hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin, and he will judge sin. And Israel was about to be judged, and there are many reasons why he's judging Israel. And then he tells Habakkuk, oh, by the way, I'm going to judge the Chaldeans too. I'm going to bring them under judgment as well. So what's the answer? And today we see terrible things happening in our world. And we say, oh my goodness, what's going on? Well, we can't change the world. God's going to do that. He's going to bring his kingdom in. He's going to destroy all the other kingdoms. And he's going to bring his kingdom in and it will, it will go on forever. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to walk by faith because... The just live by what? Faith. Now we've looked at these four passages. Romans chapter 1 concerning the power of the gospel of God's grace. And then we've looked at Galatians chapter 2. The truth of the gospel. It is not by the law. It is not by works. It is by faith. We don't compromise the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We go to the book of Hebrews. And we find that in the book of Hebrews, we must have perseverance of faith. And we must, because the just live by faith. And we have many examples how to do that in chapter 11 of Hebrews. Now, I want to test us a little bit. All right, this is going to make you think. And when you get on here on Sundays and Wednesdays, I'm going to make you think. Okay? Now, um, look in the book of James. The book of James. Now, I want you to look at these passages in between our teachings and think about it. That's one of the things I want to teach you and that we must share. We must meditate on the word. Not just hear it and say, okay, nice sermon and leave. No, we want to carry it with us. We want to carry it with us. Now, does works have nothing to do with justification? 
No, that's a lie too. That's not so. And we have an example of that in the book of James, chapter 2. James, chapter 2, verse 21. The book of James is a book that tests, they're tests of faith. Tests of faith. And he says up here that you say that you have faith, but I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. In other words, James is saying that you cannot merely claim faith and not have the works to back it up. Oh no, that's not the just shall live by faith. It never has been that way. Now, in the book of James chapter 2 and in verse 21, James poses a question. And he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Now, you must understand the chronology of the Old Testament. When Isaac was offered on the altar, that's Genesis 22. It's in Genesis 15 where it says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. We call that imputed righteousness. Imputed sounds just like the word means. Add to. Or put to one's account. When we impute something with numbers or money, that means we're, we're putting it to something someone's account. When Abraham believed God, it was put to his account. Now, in verse 21 of James 2, the offering of Isaac was some ten years later, many years later. And he says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. Now James says, Okay, Abraham proved his faith by his works. He didn't say Abraham was saved by works. He's saying that his faith was made mature by works. You see, and the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. That act happened many years before Abraham was tested to offer up Isaac upon the altar. Um, and it was called, and he was called the friend of God. You see, then, that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. What does that mean? We thought we read in the book of Galatians, it's not by faith. I mean, it's not by works. It's not by law. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. And it is. But James is saying there is more to it than claiming it. There must be works to back it up. In other words, you must prove the just live by faith by your works. Now, let me give you a parallel example of this truth, please. Look in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. And in verse 8 through 10. I want us to have... I want us to have the balance of doctrine. We do not produce law righteousness, and even if we could produce law righteousness, we would not be saved. The Bible's clear about that. If we produce works and good works, and we do so well in that, that will not save. It is only the righteousness of God that saves. 
But we are saved to do good works, you see. So look in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. It says, For by grace are ye saved. Now let me explain grace. Grace is God's unrecompensable, unmerited loving kindness abundantly shed upon us. His unrecompensable, unpayable, you cannot pay for God's grace. You cannot earn it. You cannot work for it. You cannot have it accredited. It is given of God. It is given of God. Um, and that is God's grace for salvation. It's given. <clears throat> it is given by faith. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. In salvation, it's by grace through faith. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it. We shouldn't have it. But God gives it to us by faith. Faith is the conviction in who God is. Faith is the conviction in who God is. For by grace are ye saved through faith. That's God's salvation. That's how someone is truly delivered from sin to God. And may I say that until we do that, we are not his people. Um, you may be a good Catholic. You may be a good Protestant. You may be a good student. You may be a good person. But to be saved, to be standing in Christ, you must have his salvation. And it's by grace through faith. And the way we receive that salvation to as many as, as received him, to them gave he the power to become the children of God. That's God's salvation, not religion's salvation. No, religion would have you do works to earn. And may I say, that's not God's grace. That's not justification with God. And notice, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now, if I fly over from the United States and I come with a precious gift to you and I hand it to you and tell you this is a gift, are you expected to pay for it? Are you expected to earn it? I know, then it's no longer a gift, is it? If you have to pay for it or earn it or do something for it, it is no longer a gift. It's wages. It's something you've had to earn or deserve. We don't deserve God's salvation. We are sinners. We are, um, we are ungodly. Um, we have a sin nature. God gives us this gift through Jesus Christ. And it says, if you notice, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should glory. The only place we should glory is in the person of Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 10, For we, and Paul is talking to the Asia Minor churches, Ephesians was the central hub of the Asia Minor churches, those churches you see that are spoken to in the book of Revelation. He says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So we're not saved by good works, but instead, by grace through faith, we're saved to do good works. And the workmanship is the word poema. 
poema. And that word poema means orchestra. An orchestra has many different instruments and musicians. Um, and all of those musicians and instruments are to make one sound. So we are his poema, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, God's salvation doesn't start with us. It starts with him in infinity. It says, ordained ordained before so God has preordained he knew us before the world began he he predetermined us to be in Jesus before the world began because you see there's no time with God time is a physical limitation and God's the creator he is not subject to limitation. Time is a limitation. God is infinite. He's everywhere present. And no less God everywhere he is. Through all eternity. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. The eternal beginning, the eternal ending. So when we are talking about God's salvation and the just shall live by faith, that it's by grace, not by works, we're talking about something that's infinite. This was accomplished before the world began. Now please look in the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. The book of of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and it says who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So we see that this gospel, that which saves us, that which calls us, that which justifies us, was before the foundation of the world in Christ Jesus. Uh, Dr. Kachu, I can't hardly talk over the background noise. Dr. Kachu, if we could get rid of some of the background noise, that's going to help us. All right, so let's go back to the book of Romans. Too much, too much. Romans chapter 1. We're going to go back now to the book of Romans chapter 1. Too much background noise. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. And verse 2, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So the gospel is defined in the person of Christ. And the basis of of that person is according to the Holy Scripture or the Holy Graphe, the Holy Writ. And it says, concerning his son, capital S, deity, 
Jesus Christ our Lord, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So Jesus Christ came through the lineage of of the kingship of David. He is the son of David. The louder I get, the louder they get. All right, verse 4. And declared the son, that is deity of God, with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. The explanation of the power of the gospel of God is found in God himself in Christ Jesus and the fact that he is risen from the dead. He hath abolished death and brought immortality to light through the gospel. Verse 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. So we see that this faith must be obeyed so that the righteousness of God is imputed to our account. The just shall live by faith. So notice, among all nations for his name, among whom ye are ye also the call of Jesus Christ. Now we need to follow that up in the book of Romans, chapter 8, and in verse 28. The call in Christ Jesus. And then we're going to have a quick review. And then I must get off for the next meeting. So notice in Romans chapter 8. Wheat. Verse 28. And we know that God worketh all things for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his sovereign working purpose. Verse 29 of Romans 8. It says, For whom he, that is God, did foreknow. That means infinitely knew. He infinitely knew you ahead. He also did predestinate. That means pre-horizon. So we went from infinite past to infinite future in one sentence. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about the Bible. Now notice, what are we to do? To be conformed to the image of his son. The image is the direct representation and full manifestation that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, the firstborn from the dead, risen again among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, that means pre-horizon eternally, then he also called those that he called or elected means chosen by grace infinitely beforehand. So you see, God's salvation is infinite. It's infinite. It has nothing to do with our works or the keeping of the law. And it goes on to say, and whom he called, them he also justified. Justification means declared righteous. It's a legal term. It's the same as if a judge's gavel falls and says justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Did you know you're already glorified in Christ Jesus? 
It has been done. That's what grace is all about. Grace is infinite. God and Jesus Christ is infinite. And this biblical doctrine, the just shall live by faith, is based faith to faith in Jesus Christ and God and who he is. Now, let me review because we've looked at it a lot. Okay? We started in Romans chapter 1. You must read the chapter of Romans chapter 1, please. And we've started in verse 16 where Paul in his testimony says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This gospel is God's gospel. And he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And that's the view of Romans concerning the just shall live by faith. It is by the power of God. And it says, for everyone that believeth. Now verse 17 tells us the ingredients of this faith in his gospel. In it is the righteousness of God. That is what all men lack. All men lack this. From the most wicked sinner to the most religious person. We must have the righteousness of God. It is revealed from faith to faith. It is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, we also looked in the book of Galatians, chapter 2. Galatians, chapter 2. And Galatians is about the truth of the gospel. If we do not mix the gospel of grace with law or with works or with moral righteousness. And Paul is explaining that. And he says, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ. And not by works of law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Then we looked at the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2. And God is bringing judgment through the Chaldeans to Israel. And Habakkuk says, how can a holy God do this terrible thing? to those more righteous than these wicked Chaldeans. And it tell, he is told that the just shall live by faith. That don't tarry too long, this is coming. And then he tells Habakkuk that later on, he will judge the Chaldeans too. Then we looked at the book of Hebrews chapter 10 about perseverance of faith. How that we're not to draw back because the just live by faith. That we must have a perseverance. We must have a recompense of reward. We're not to cast all this away because of persecution for standing for Christ. Then we have a chapter of those who walked by faith in chapter 11 all the way through chapter 12, 1 and 2 of Hebrews. And there we see Jesus, the originator and perfecter of the faith. We also looked in the book of James. And the idea of works is... Ouch, the idea of works is not divorced from the just shall live by faith. In fact, it is the proof of the just shall live by faith. As Abraham offered up Isaac, 
And if you read chapter 11 of Hebrews, you'll understand how he could do that. He believed God, according to the promises, would have to raise up Isaac again because God said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, therefore, works perfect the justification of faith. Then we looked at passages like Ephesians chapter 2. That salvation is by grace through faith. It is the gift of God unto salvation. And that we are his workmanship to produce good works. Then we looked at the infinite. The infinite God and infinite salvation. That we are the call. And those he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And those that he called and those that love him have been predetermined. They have been pre to be in Christ Jesus. So when we consider the just shall live by faith, we must consider these passages and the full view of the scriptures. And we'll be going through these one at a time together. Now it is time for me to part my brethren. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may you be found in his grace and in his favor. God bless you. That was rough. <laughs>